Hey everybody and welcome to another edition of the Mama Pies Before the Lesson podcast. I'm your host, Carlos Smiley. Now last week, we heard the Apostle Paul go all in, opening his mouth and removing all doubt relative to who Jesus is. Not only was he there in creation, but through Mother Mary, he was also created. And by him, all things were created. Those things that are in heaven and those things that are in earth. That right there should settle any argument, but scripture goes deeper. Scripture helps us to dismiss any misconception of who Jesus is. You see, Paul tells us that he is the irrefutable image of the invisible God. Scripture tells us that Jesus is the firstborn from the dead, which makes him in all things, as my mama would say, numero uno preeminent, omnipotent, omniscient. He is that bright and morning star. He is the Lion of Judah. He is the Bread of Life, our Lord and our Savior, our Redeemer. He is the Son of the Living God. So on Sunday, the title of our lesson is Full Life in Christ. The scriptural basis of our lesson is Colossians, second chapter. So the question that I have, and maybe you do too, is how did we go from there, there being a full-throated endorsement of who Jesus is, above whom there is none higher, to here, that being striving for a fuller life in, in Christ. I submit to you now that we go deeper. Paul is not bashful in telling the saints that we've got to be rooted, built up, and established in the faith. He, and just like we've been taught, We need to be abounding therein with thanksgiving. Hopefully after today's conversation, we'll better understand what our biblical heroes were dealing with. A rambunctious congregation, wishy-washy people, Sunday saints, Friday night ain'ts. We'll better understand their sleepless nights, their long-suffering days, the care that they put into their calling. So if you like what you hear, Click the button below and subscribe to our channel. Now let's dig into this thing and see can we figure it out. This week, we continue in the epistle of Colossians as the Apostle Paul continues to lift up Jesus. He lifts Jesus as he admonishes the saints at Coloss to dig deeper. Dig deeper into their recollection of the gospel as first brought to them through Epaphras. He's letting them know that everybody that claims that they've been called, everybody that claims to know him, may not. Paul is telling them, and us, to go way back to that soul-saving experience on the altar. But don't just stop there. Go deeper into our memory bank, back to the time when we knew. Ain't nobody have to tell us. We knew that we were sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore very deeply stained within, sinking to rise no more. Song says, but the master of the sea, he heard our despairing cry. From the waters he lifted me, now safe am I. It was a living God's love through his son, Jesus Christ, that lifted all of us. Sometimes, you know, our minds can drift to places where we begin to feel not as close to God alienated by some of the things that we've heard, some of the people that we've trusted that may have taken advantage of us, different voices in our ear. And in those moments, you know, we got to know that we know that we know. Saints used to say he brought me from a mighty long way. Scripture didn't tell us that we wouldn't have bad days, but the prophet Amos told us that we've got to put them up against the plumb line and earnestly see for ourselves that all of our good days outweigh our bad days. So we then continue, we continue in the faith. Paul tells us in Colossians chapter one, if we continue in the faith, grounded and settled, and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel, which ye have heard, and which was preached to every creature which is under the sun, even the mystery which has been hid from ages and from generations, but now is made manifest 
to his saints. He's saying, stop listening to folk telling you that you, you're less than, that you're not enough, that you need more of this or less of that. Jesus paid it all. His sacrifice on the cross was more than enough, much more than we deserved. So if God says it, that ought to settle it, and we ought to believe it. He did it through his redemptive work on the cross, through which both Jews and Gentiles now have access and are united in him and through him. Verse 27 tells us to whom God would make known is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles which is Christ in you, the hope of the glory. As Paul was resetting the mindset of the church at Colossus, he was also letting them know that their spiritual welfare was paramount on his mind. He was agonizing in prayer, not just for the believers in Colossus, but for that entire region, Hierapolis, Laodicea, churches that were also being threatened by false teachers. He let them know that right now, y'all need to be united in the fight against Judaistic tendencies. Those that would argue you couldn't be saved unless you got circumcised. Those that would contend that strict dietary rituals and regulations be followed. Those that would posit that mandatory adherence to festival holidays be adhered to. The church at Colossus needed to fully recognize the sufficiency of Christ. But the duality of Paul's message was that he wanted them to know that he was fully confident and even joyful that they would emerge victorious from the craziness that was going on around them. He was confident because they were standing resolute, unbroken in their ranks, and their attention and focus was still on Christ alone. Paul tells them in chapter two that your hearts might be comforted, being knit together in love and unto all riches of the full assurance of understanding to the acknowledgement of the mystery of God and of the Father and of Christ. So on Sunday, we've got to know that. We've got to know that when we meet our devil, whatever that may be, however that may look, when we catch the can't help it, we need to put on the full armor of God, put our God, not just on display, but allow Jehovah Nisi to fight our battles and to be our banner. Because our Lord and Savior is the one that holds the whole world in his hand. He's the one that sets the sun, hangs the moon, and sprinkles the stars throughout. Therefore, let us walk confidently, rooted and built up in him, established in the faith, as we've been taught. Don't let nobody spoil us through their unhinged philosophies, and their vain deceit. For in Jesus Christ dwells all the fullness of the Godhead. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely, Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Now, let the word of Christ dwell in us richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in our hearts to the Lord. And whatsoever we do in word or in deed, do all. In the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by him. Looking forward to next week's lesson as we go back in and dig a little deeper here on the Before the Lesson podcast. Remember to subscribe to our Mama Pie Sunday School class YouTube channel. And until next time, be blessed.